In today's video, I am going to explain anatomy of pelvic floor. In first part, I'm going to explain basic anatomy. Second part, I'm going to explain relationship with internal organ. Then on third part, I will explain how you can apply today's anatomy for yoga and pilates. This is inferior view. We are looking at the pelvic floor from inferior. I will explain important landmarks first. You see this big bony bump? This is ischium, particularly ischial tuberosity. Ischial tuberosity. This is also known as sit bone. Okay. Next one is here. This is coccyx. Coccyx. This is pubis. If you connect these four points, this like square kind of shape, right? Then in this square kind of shape, there is pelvic floor. If you look at uh, detailed anatomy of pelvic floor, there is superficial layer, there is deep layer, but I'm not gonna talk about too much detail. So basically this area is pelvic floor. Why is this area so important? Because there are a lot of exit, okay? This is anus. You know, this is the exit of digestive system, right? And this is urethra. This is vagina. So they are like exit of urogenital function. Thus, the adequate tension of pelvic floor is very important to maintain digestive system and urogenital system. Then I will look different view because if you see this picture, pelvic floor looks very flat, right? But it's not a flat structure, it's three-dimensional structure. Now you are looking pelvic floor and pelvis from profile view. This is sacrum, this is coccyx, and this is pubis. And its shared tuberosity is about here. You see that? Then, where is pelvic floor? You see this thin layer? This is pelvic floor. That's so thin, right? There is a, like almost membrane. So they are not thick muscle, like shoulder muscles and hip muscles. Pelvic floor is very thin muscle, but that's so important. I will explain how you can apply today's anatomy later. What kind of internal organs are related to pelvic floor? That's digestive system and urogenital system. What is this one? This is rectum. This part is rectum. And it becomes anus and exits from anus, right? Number one, rectum. Next one is this one. This is uterus. Uterus becomes vagina and there is exit. Then in front of uterus, there is bladder. Right here. Bladder becomes urethra. Urethra then urine exits, right? This is female pelvis. So if you are male, there is prostate around here, okay? There's prostate for male pelvis. This is, again, this is female pelvis. See, there are a lot of internal organs related to pelvic floor. So what happens if your pelvic floor gets too much tension or less tension that may affect these structures digestive system urogenital function this is my personal opinion that female tend to have less tension for pelvic floor because you know female has to give you birth right then tendency is their pelvic floor gets loosened on the other hand for male the pelvic floor tends to get too much tension. This is just my personal opinion. So maybe other people say opposite things. So please take this opinion as my personal opinion. 
anyhow, either too much tension or too less tension of pelvic floor will aggravate these structures. Okay, that's very important structure. Then, how can you activate pelvic floor? That's here. And remember, this is thin layer, thin structure. So you cannot feel obvious contraction like hip muscles and shoulder muscles. How can you activate that? Remember, pelvic floor is related to urogenital function and digestive functions. So if you want to activate this kind of anterior triangular part, you can focus that you hold urination, okay? Because on anterior part, there is urethra. You try to hold urination. Then, if you want to activate posterior part, what's there? There is anus. So you try to hold the anus. You try to hold, you want to go to bathroom. This is a basic way, basic visualization to activate anterior pelvic floor or posterior pelvic floor. That's very famous one if you do Pilates, right? Then remember, pelvic floor is not flat structure. It is three-dimensional structure. So you have visualization that pelvic floor shapes like this. Then you have good vision, you have good intention to use this thin muscle. Does it make sense? Then I would like to add one more structure that is related to pelvic floor. I want to explain one abdominal muscle. That's this one. This is transverse abdominis. Transverse abdominis. This is the deepest layer among abdominal muscle. Okay, this is the deepest layer. If you follow myofascial connection from transverse abdominis, you can go to pelvic floor. Imagine, transverse abdominis runs like this. This is the deepest layer. See? Then, there's myofascial connection between transverse abdominis and pelvic floor. This unit, kind of a deep muscle unit, is important for maintaining abdominal pressure and pelvic pressure. So if you can use transverse abdominis very well, maybe it's easy to activate pelvic floor. Vice versa, if you are good at stimulating pelvic floor, maybe it's easy to activate transverse abdominis. Do you see this relationship? Deep layer, deep layer connection is important for various things for internal organ, for uh, abdominal pressure, numerous things. Okay, do you see this relationship? Again, this is transverse abdominis. If you follow connection, you can go to pelvic floor. Now, let's look at real person, then let's have an even better visualization. This is real person. This person is doing yoga and this is warrior two pose. Warrior 2. I just picked up this pose, so you can apply today's anatomy for any pose, any Pilates movement, any athletic movement. Her pelvic floor is a bird here. Remember, this is three-dimensional structure. If you can activate pelvic floor, maybe your pelvis is stabilized very nicely. Again, plus there's myofascial connection between pelvic floor and transverse abdominis. Why are they important? They are important for maintaining pressure inside of abdomen and pelvis. Thus, if you can use these structures, your core, your pelvis can be stabilized very nicely. Stabilization is very important for yoga and pilates. Thus, you can focus these structure for any movement, any pose. Having good visualization, having good image of anatomy is so important for this kind of stretching, yoga, pilates, and athletic movement. 
In today's video, I explained basic anatomy of pelvic floor and I explained relationship with internal organs. If you liked today's video, please hit the like button, comment and subscribe. See you next video.